We're doing a policy hackathon actually here at CSIS. Uh, it's called Cyber Diplo Hack, and we're working with the uh, ne Royal Netherlands Embassy to promote awareness of GCCS, the Global Conference on Cyberspace in The Hague in April. What we're doing is we're taking a realistic cyber incident scenario. The Kingdom of Zambonia, uh, modeled off of uh, an actual country, uh, it's a developing country in Southeast Asia. The incident is uh, an attack on their banking infrastructure, on the central bank and on the commercial bank system. We have six teams, three based in the United States, three based in Europe, and the challenge is to identify um, uh, strategies for, for responding to, mitigating, and defending against such attacks in the future. This cyber policy hack will be one of the first of its kind to have ever been organized in the United States and I do hope that it will introduce you to new and indeed creative ideas. On the second day with the teams they will present their pitch to a panel of judges. They're going to pitch it like they're pitching a technology product and convince the panel that it's worthy of their investments. We'll select a winner and that winner will be invited to uh, attend the Hague conference. That's the big prize. We are the University of Maryland, University College's Cyber Padawan team. We compete in technical competitions for ethical hacking and cyber defense and cyber attack and things like that. So this is our first policy competition. So this is a new experience for us. All the knowledge we have is from books. And now we actually have to use the knowledge in real life, in an environment of time pressure, um, there's there's something at stake because everybody wants to solve this case and come up with a solution. Basically all of us have an experience in some aspect of cyber. I'm more so in the computer science, cryptography side. We've got people who work with trade relations, so we've really got a very um, solid team that can cover all the bases of this from a policy perspective and from a technical perspective. Since it's new, it forces us to to, yes, to think of new solutions, new ideas, new ways to, to express them. So it's, uh, it's really interesting. It's going pretty well. It's definitely challenging, you know, with the time constraints, it makes it very nerve wracking and especially because of the decision-making process. Um, luckily, we have really good team dynamics, so we're able to disagree with each other and come to consensus. Uh, I expect that there'll be a, a lot of variety in the responses, uh, given that there are different, different kind of backgrounds, different approaches uh, in the universities. I just think it'll be really interesting to see what people come up with. Good morning everyone, I would like to welcome you all to this Cyber Policy Hackathon. Uh, it's an official pre-event to the GCCS 2015 because we wanted to spread the word already in advance. To achieve true progress, we need the help of young, creative minds like all of you here in the room. I hope to welcome the winning team to The Hague in April. Um, we have had very strong teams. The two subjects they're working on, as you'll see in the presentations, are both capacity building and cybersecurity which are the themes of the Hague Conference. It's something to look forward to, and with that, I think we'll get started. 48 hours ago, the financial infrastructure in Zambonia was attacked. I'm coming to you today to request your assistance in responding to this threat. We're gonna restore services, we're going to enhance our capabilities, and then we're going to build that policy. We need to reassure the public that their information is in fact secure, that their money can be recovered. And part of that is going to be the incident response teams. Trust in the banking system is essential to attract and retain investors, especially in Zambonia, where the majority of bank shareholders are foreign. Now the attack showed that there is a great need to improve the resilience and the protection of the networks and also to train the workforce. 
We therefore propose to use the political leverage of the attacks to create a center of excellence for banking cybersecurity in Zambonia. There's a political will, I would guess, right now to implement some pretty bold ideas. The vision is really to bring uh, Zambonia into an information society where the public and um, international partners can be a part of something that takes them into the future of data security. On the short-term side, we have the financial sector. The financial sector is very important as it was the biggest victim of the attack. Therefore, it needs stabilization to prevent spillover effects. In the long-term measures, we have public safety. The public safety is important because there can be spillover effects from the financial sector um, which will decrease public safety. Therefore, it's important to train cyber inspectors and law enforcement, which is on an operational level. Our first suggested investment is to create international standards, an international compliance code, if you will, for cybersecurity as it specifically relates to financial institutions. There needs to be a minimum threshold of cybersecurity compliance for institutional participants in global finance. Things like standard encryption practices on end-to-end -end so that financial terminals have trusted connections to do trade. Data redundancy and recovery processes so that there's actual backup in the event that something like this should happen again. There needs to be an institutionalized capacity that can aid a developing country in need. This is the idea of a cyber disaster relief fund. In case of a national level cyber event where Zambonia's resources are exhausted, it would like to harness the international community's support, both politically and operationally, in times of crisis. The Stronger presentations had a sense of connectedness. So a connectedness across different parts of government, a connectedness between government and industry, and then also a connectedness with the international community. There were some really creative uh, sort of point programs for capacity building that we heard in each of the presentations. I know I'm looking forward to taking, taking some of your ideas and, and, and taking them forward into some of the organizations that I work in. Well, just in terms of methodology, I'll start by saying we did not look at the audience voting results until after we had made our decision. But we agreed with the audience results and we also selected UMUC as our overall winner. I think we won because we capitalized upon our strength. We are primarily a technical team and so we started off with a technical response very, very quickly saying this is how we're going to do it, this is how we're going to solve it. And then we used that as a springboard to, cap to continue onward and say now that we've got all this equipment in place, we're going to enhance their capabilities, we're going to build off of that. And now that we've started that process and we have this momentum, now we're going to define their cyber strategy for the entire kingdom and keep them involved in that process so that they are able to manage it themselves. So today is really an exciting opportunity. I mean, getting to engage with students in academia from diverse backgrounds, undergrad, graduate, computer science, MBAs, and hearing what their thoughts are on how to deal with the policy issues that are challenging around the world is just very exciting and honestly very inspirational. The days are gone when governments can do it alone. To, si to survive today, collaboration and cooperation among states, private sector, academia, NGOs, and citizens must be part of the solution. If you told me five years ago people would be this interested in the policy aspects of this, I, would, I wouldn't have believed it. It really means that this is really much more of a mainstream issue, which, which is just totally great. I'm going to announce the real winner now. And the real winner is the Global Conference on Cyberspace. Of course it is. Um, you know, events like this are super important because we do have a lot of different challenges going on in the world, and they're not just technical. For so long, the cybersecurity challenges were thought about as solely being in the technical domain. But now we need to bridge the technical expertise with policy expertise and bring together stakeholders who have different types of backgrounds to really work on this set of issues. And the global need for a cyber-savvy workforce is overwhelming. And this is exactly why an important initiative will be launched during the GCCS in The Hague, the Global Forum on Cyber Expertise. And it will aim to strengthen the existing framework of international cooperation and build new partnerships where they are most needed.